Saint Augustine commentary on Psalm 119, Tet. You have dealt in sweetness with your servant according to your word, or rather, according unto your utterance. Verse 65. The Greek word, chrestotes, have been variously rendered by our translators by the words sweetness and goodness. But since sweetness may exist also in evil, since all unlawful and unclean things afford pleasure, and it may also exist in that carnal pleasure which is permitted, we ought to understand the word sweetness, which the Greeks termed chrestotes, of being spiritual blessings. For on this account, our translators have preferred to term it goodness. I think, therefore, that nothing else is meant by the words you have dealt in sweetness with your servant than this you have made me feel delight in that which is good. For when that which is good delights, it is a great gift of God. But when the good work which the law commands is done from a fear of punishment, not from a delight in righteousness, when God is dreaded, not loved, it is the act of a slave, not of a free man. John chapter 8 verse 35 and 1 John four eighteen. O oh, learn me sweetness and understanding and knowledge, he says, for I have believed your commandments. Verse 66. He prays these things may be increased and perfected. For they who said, Lord, increase our faith, Luke 17, 5, had faith. And as long as we live in this world, these are the words of those who are making progress. But he adds understanding, or as most copies read, discipline. Now the word discipline, for which the Greeks use paideia, is employed in scripture, where instruction through tribulation is to be understood according to the words, whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and scourges every son whom he receives. Hebrew 12.6 in the literature of the church, this is usually called discipline. For this word, paideia, is used in the Greek in the Epistle to the Hebrews, where the Latin translator says, No discipline, for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Hebrews 12.11 He therefore, toward whom the Lord deals in sweetness, that is, he in whom he mercifully inspires delight in that which is good ought to pray instantly that this gift may be so increased unto him that he may not only despise all other delights in comparison with it, but also that he may endure any amount of sufferings for its sake. Thus is discipline healthfully added to sweetness. This discipline ought not to be desired and prayed for, for a small measure of grace and goodness, that is holy love, but for so great as may not be extinguished by the weight of the chastening, so much in fact as to enable him to endure with the utmost patience the discipline. In the third place is mentioned knowledge, since if knowledge in its greatness outstrips the increase of love, it does not edify, but puffs up. 1 Corinthians 8.1 But in that he says not, give unto me, but, O oh, learn me, how is the sweetness taught, if it be not given? since many know what does not delight them, and find no sweetness in things of which they have knowledge. For sweetness can't be learnt, unless it please. 
also discipline, which signifies the tribulation which chastens, is learned by receiving, that is, not by hearing or reading or thinking, but by feeling. He adds, For I have believed your commandments, and herein we may justly inquire why he said not, I obeyed, rather than I believed. For commandments are one thing, promises another. We understand to obey commandments that we may deserve to receive promises. We therefore believe promises obey commandments. Teach me therefore sweetness by inspiring charity. Teach me discipline by giving patience. Teach me knowledge by enlightening my understanding. For I have believed your commandments. I have believed that you are God and who gives unto man whence you may cause him to do what you command, have commanded these things. Before I was humbled, I went wrong, wherefore I have kept your word. Verse 67. Or, as some have it more closely, your utterance, that is, lest I should be humbled again. This is better referred to that humiliation which took place in Adam, in whom the whole human creature, as it were, being corrupted at the root, as it refused to be subject to truth, was made subject to vanity. Genesis 3.17 and Romans 8.20 Which it was profitable to the vessels of mercy to feel that by throwing down pride, obedience might be loved, and misery perish, never again to return. Sweet are you, O Lord, or as many have it, sweet are you, even you, O Lord. Verse 68 Some also, sweet are you, or good are you, as we have before treated of this word, and in your sweetness teach me your statutes. He truly desires to do the righteousnesses of God, since he desires to learn them in his sweetness from him and to whom he has said, Sweet are you, O Lord. Next he says, The iniquity of the proud has been multiplied upon me. Verse 69 of those, that is, whom it profits not that human nature was humbled after it went wrong. But I will search your commandments with my whole heart. Howsoever, he says, iniquity shall abound, love shall not go cold in me. Matthew twenty four twelve. He, as it were, says this, who in his sweetness learns the righteousnesses of God. For, in proportion as the commandments of him who aids us are the more sweet, so much the more does he who loves him search after them, that he may perform them when known, and may learn them by doing them, because they are more perfectly understood when they are performed. Their heart is curdled as milk, verse 70, whose save the proud, whose iniquity he has said has been multiplied upon him, but he wishes it to be understood by this word, and in this passage, that their heart has become hard. It is used also in a good sense. Psalm 68 verse 15 And, in, and is understood to mean full of grace, for this word somehow also have interpreted curdled. It is good for me that you have humbled me, that I might learn your righteousnesses. Verse 71. He has said something kindred to this above, for by the fruit itself he shows that it was a good thing for him to be humbled. But in the former passage, he has stated the cause also in that he had felt beforehand that humiliation which resulted from his punishment 
when he went wrong. But in these words, wherefore have I kept your word, and again in these, that I might learn your righteousnesses, he seems to me to have signified that to know these is the same thing as to keep them, to keep them the same thing as to know them. For Christ knew what he, what he reproved, and yet he reproved sin, though it is said of him that he knew not sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21 He knew therefore by a kind of knowledge, and again he knew not by a kind of ignorance. Thus also many learn the righteousnesses of God, and learn them not, for they know them in a certain way, and again do not know them from a kind of ignorance, since they do them not. In this sense the psalmist therefore is to be understood to have said, that I might learn your righteousnesses, meaning that kind of knowledge whereby they are performed. But that this is not gained, save through love, wherein he who does them has delight, on which account it is said, In your sweetness teach me your righteousnesses. The following verse shows, wherein he says, The law of your mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Verse 72 so that love loves the law of God more than avarice loves thousands of gold and silver.